Hello, I'm Ian Lindsay, the British Ambassador to Hungary. Today, the 16th of May, is the birthday of our dear friend and colleague Stephen Dick, who tragically passed away on the 24th of March. Given that it may be some time before we are able to gather together in person to remember and celebrate his life, Stephen's parents, Carol and Stephen, asked if we could hold this online memorial event on the occasion of his birthday. We have tributes today from those who knew him here in Budapest, from the British Embassy, the Hungarian government, the British and Scottish communities, and from the diplomatic community. We also have contributions from the University of Pécs, where Stephen studied Hungarian last summer, from the Foreign and Commonwealth Office in London, and on behalf of his many friends worldwide, from a friend of Stephen's in Washington, who joined the Foreign Office with him. First, I would like to read a message from Carol Dick, Stephen's mother, on behalf of her and her husband. Stephen was a wonderful, sweet boy. Even as a baby, he had a calm temperament. And as he grew into a little boy, he always took things in his stride. I remember his first day at school. I think I was more nervous than he was. I held his little hand and walked to the gate, thinking he was about to cry. But he calmly turned to me and said, this is going to be fun. Will there be lots of children here for me to play with? I laughed and said there would be. Stephen always had a great sense of empathy and compassion, so I am not at all surprised that he grew up to be such a compassionate, understanding and remarkable young man. His father and I are so proud of him, so very proud. I miss that big smile that melts my heart, that infectious laugh that makes me want to laugh along with him. I miss our trips to the theatre, restaurants, and even our shopping trips, which sometimes exasperated him if I couldn't make up my mind. He'd tease us about a lot of things, about being embarrassingly technologically incompetent, for, for instance, how behind we were with the rest of the world. Yet he bought me an iPhone and surprised me with a laptop. That is the kind of person he was. Warm, generous, big-hearted. Even as he teased me, he did it to make me laugh, besides pointing out the obvious. He always wanted to join the Foreign Office as he loved to travel and would be able to have the opportunity to immerse himself into other cultures, visiting new places in the world, working with different people and representing the UK. He was extremely excited to get the Budapest Deputy Head of Mission post and told us how he loved the job, the people and the culture. He spoke often of the open, kind and welcoming people he met and that he was settling into his new role. He met and made a lot of friends, all of whom experienced what an amazingly wonderful, giving and loving person he was. Every person he met had a story about how funny, helpful and loyal he was. He had this amazing gift of making every person he met instantly comfortable. He could enter a room and brighten it with his smile, his attitude or just his presence. He had it. He had so many dreams and so many plans for the future, he would have made those dreams come true. Stephen will live in our hearts forever. My husband and I wish to express our heartfelt thanks for all the cards, letters and emails received, which have given us comfort and support as Stephen seemed to have touched the lives of so many people. We would like to say a special thank you to Ambassador Ian Lindsay and his wife Bridget. You both welcomed Stephen into your family and cared for him. And for that, we will be forever grateful to you both. In his short time with the Embassy, Stephen made a big impression on all of his colleagues. We remember first and foremost his sense of humour. Stephen was sharp and funny. In our open plan office, he was often the centre of people laughing and joking. He led Kaylee dancing late into the night at our staff Christmas party, even if most of us couldn't keep up. We remember his directness. Stephen was keen to be open and honest with everyone, but also dealt with people with respect and sensitivity. 
he encouraged others to do the same. He was keen that everyone had the opportunity to develop both personally and professionally and helped us to find ways to do that. Remember his talent and professionalism. Stephen quickly established great working relationships across society and spoke wonderful Hungarian. He was always curious and never turned down the chance to learn more about Hungarian culture. Remember, above all, Stephen's warmth. He was a people person. He was always looking out for his colleagues and genuinely interested in getting to know everyone on a more personal level. We will always treasure the time we had with you, Stephen. We miss you. I am Simon MacDonald, the Permanent Undersecretary in the Foreign Office. I first met Stephen Dick four years ago when he was Chief of Staff to our Chief Operating Officer. I knew him as an efficient and undaunted diplomat. Two months ago, it was my sad duty as Head of the Service to inform colleagues of Stephen's untimely death. Afterwards, I received hundreds of messages from colleagues around the world who told me about Stephen the man. He clearly had a talent for friendship. He will be, he is very much missed. We will remember him. I met Stephen shortly after he arrived to Budapest and I immediately saw what a wonderful person he was. Stephen was very friendly and engaging and showed a high level of professionalism. We were very lucky to have him as a second diplomat in the Foreign Ministry before he started his work at the British Embassy. His deep knowledge of the issues, his enthusiasm and his eagerness to make a contribution to fostering productive British-Hungarian relations made him a truly appreciated colleague and friend. Stephen was among those few diplomats who have both outstanding professional and personal qualities. He was always helpful. He worked hard and was full of ideas about how to make things better. He was accomplished and he had a delightful personality and the greatest laugh. It was truly rewarding to work with him. His passing is a loss for all of us, a loss for Hungary too. We will always remember him. We read in Proverbs chapter 15, verse 1, a gentle answer turns away wrath. I've often thought that would be a useful verse for diplomats to know. I don't know if Stephen was familiar with that passage of scripture, but I do believe that he lived it out in his work. Whether we had a chance to meet him only once in his all too short time here in Budapest or on a few occasions as I did, I believe that the first impression and the lasting impression he left with us all is that of his kindness and gentleness. I'm grateful that Stephen addressed the haggis at our burn supper and that he addressed students participating in the Jane Haining competition. I'm grateful I had a chance to know him. It was once said of Jane Haining that she was a fine example of a Scot abroad. I believe these words apply to Stephen as well. A fine example of a Scot abroad indeed. I first met Stephen not long after he arrived officially in Budapest last autumn. After he accepted my invitation to come and sit on the board of the Robert Burns International Foundation here in Hungary, he attended our Burns Supper in January and then in February the two of us travelled down to the southwest of Hungary to a function at one of our beneficiary hospitals down there where he made a huge impression on the doctors and the nurses and everybody at the function there that evening, not least after having given a long speech in fluent Hungarian. We spent a lot of time uh, traveling up and down uh, that weekend in the car. Turns out we grew up just a few miles from each other in the south side of Glasgow. A lot of my friends went to the same school uh, as Stephen and who knows, perhaps our, our paths even crossed at that time. I'm sorry that we didn't get the chance to, to get to know Stephen better. I know he was really looking forward to helping us with our charity work here in Hungary. But at the same time, 
I'm really glad that we did get the chance to meet him and we got the chance to call him a friend. And it's those memories that we will all cherish. There is a phrase that only the good die young. Sadly, this current pandemic situation has made us realize how true this sentence really is when the virus took Stephen away from us. He was a good and cheerful person, which made him stand out of the crowd. His honest and kind-hearted presence always brightened up the mood, even of the greyest meetings. Whether it was a serious negotiation or a friendly talk next to an afternoon tea, Stephen always brought joy and smile with himself. He left Hungary, looked at Hungarians as friends, and even learned the Hungarian language, which is a huge achievement in itself. Although we knew him only for a short time, he managed to leave a long-lasting mark in all of our colleagues, and he is sorely missed. My deepest condolences to Stephen's family and to the members of the Diplomatic Corps. Let us pray. O God of grace and glory, Father of all, we remember before you this day your servant Stephen. We thank you for giving him to us, his family, friends, and colleagues, to know and to cherish as a companion on our earthly pilgrimage. In your boundless compassion, console us who mourn and grant Stephen the gift of eternal life. And pray with me if you would. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. May his soul and the souls of all the departed, through the mercy of God, rest in peace. Amen. To Stephen's family, friends, and colleagues, I'd like to say on behalf of the St. Andrews Association and the British Chamber of Commerce, how sorry we are for your loss. I first met Stephen last year with my wife Patricia, just as he arrived in Budapest to take up his new posting. As a fellow Scot, he was keen to join us at the St Andrews Ball, a chance to wear the kilt with pride. Well, what a night we had. The British Chamber then asked Stephen to be our honoured guest at our Christmas party. His opening words revealed his character and warmth. An email from Stephen in January read, Could I join the Chamber Rugby event on the 8th? I'm keen to watch the Scotland game in some good company. In a few short months, Stephen became part of our life here, his smile and warmth endearing him to all he met. He will be sorely missed. I would now like to read a message from the Mayor of Budapest, Gergi Koracjony. Stephen's family, dear friends, our lives have been turned upside down in the past two months, but nobody's as much as those who have lost loved ones. Day by day, we hear and read about the devastating human toll of the coronavirus, but for most of us, that ultimate personal loss never materialised. To those at this event today, that is not the case. In this most saddening moment, let me express my heartfelt condolences and deepest sympathies to Stephen's family. My thoughts go out also to Stephen's embassy colleagues and to all those who knew him one way or another. As Her Majesty's diplomat, a dedicated public servant, a colleague, a friend and acquaintance. The sudden end to a man's life is never more tragic than when it comes at a relatively young age, when there is so much more yet to be lived experienced and accomplished. I have no words of wisdom to explain that away and I'm not trying to, but I will say this, in Budapest, where Stephen worked and died, he will be missed and remembered dearly. Meeting Stephen for the first time, nice big smile, a funny t-shirt, shorts, the International Study Centre had just moved into its brand new building and we were still getting to know the place. He introduced the first habit here, breakfast together with colleagues. I don't know when was the moment when he quietly became a team member. 
He was fine with one-on-one -on -one language classes and also in groups. He knew what helped him to learn. He was sharp and quickly understood complex texts as well. He had another significant characteristic. He could not only speak but also listen. He was paying attention to many things at once. He listened while he sensed the spoken and unspoken reality. He perceived and appreciated the Hungarian reality. And people opened up to him shortly. He watched softly and laughed loud. He was a good friend. He will be greatly missed. Not only was Stephen one of my best friends, but he was at the heart of a close-knit social group that emerged from our foreign office intake in 2008. It was Stephen with his trademark energy and positivity that thrust himself and us into discovering and exploring London, our new home. It was Stephen that threw open the doors to his home to host fantastic dinners, relishing being the host and thriving in other company. And when we went on posting, it was never a question of if Stephen would come to visit, it was a question of when. And that's because Stephen was one of the most fiercely loyal friends I've ever been fortunate enough to have. Even after his own accident in Riyadh, his medevac from Kabul, his priority was and remained other people, his friends. He was honest but kind. He was confident but humble. He was tough but a gentle soul. Qualities that make an incredible diplomat and the perfect friend. Dear parents, dear family, dear friends of Stephen, my name is René van Hel. I'm the Netherlands ambassador to Budapest and I'm asked to say a few words uh, on behalf of the diplomatic community here in Budapest, here in Hungary. Uh, Stephen was a great colleague. He was witty, he was funny, he was intelligent, he was a true professional. He was among the very few of us who spoke Hungarian, who was fluent in Hungarian. Uh, he had invested so much of himself into being really a great member of the community and in being very effective. We mourn the loss of a colleague, we mourn the loss of a true professional. On a more personal note, uh, it was so easy to be friends with Stephen. He was, he was mischievous, he was funny, he was warm, um, he was never shy, he was unabashed, he would uh, give you feedback, no Rene, you're wrong, uh, and at the same time he was also a very warm and kind person. Um, in one word, we mourn also the lovely guy. Stephen and I met when we were both fairly new in Budapest. Although I'd been here a little bit longer, it was already him who was full of recommendations for me on local restaurants and events. And anyone could see very quickly what a kind and thoughtful and interesting guy Stephen was. My overriding memory with him will be the two of us in a restaurant somewhere in downtown Budapest him ordering his food in faultless Hungarian, while I then floundered with a couple of kusanums and a lot of English. He was a man who loved his new city and was passionate about his work here too. And I think I speak for a lot of people here in Hungary when I say I'm so pleased that I had the chance to meet Stephen. And I'm so devastated that it was for such a short time. And Stephen, you'll be greatly missed and may you rest in peace. Thank you, Alex, and my thanks and those of Carol and Stephen Dick to all of you who have paid tribute to Stephen today. Let me say a few words on behalf of me and my wife before we finish. I first met Stephen in 2011 in Riyadh in Saudi Arabia when I visited from Bahrain where I was the British ambassador. He made a strong impression on me, very similar to what we have heard from others today and in the many messages of condolence we have received from his friends and colleagues around the world. Friendly, warm, open, funny, witty, and with a sharp intellect. I was delighted, therefore, when he applied for the job of my deputy here in Budapest. Also because of his incredible aptitude for languages. Having learnt Arabic and Dari, I was sure he would be able to crack Hungarian. Interestingly, he told me afterwards that learning Hungarian had been the most difficult. After 13 months of learning Hungarian full-time, he left university in Pech in southern Hungary 
and stayed with us here at the ambassador's residence for several days preparing for his Hungarian exam. That's when we got to know him, to know what a lovely and generous person he was. He became the first British official for many, many years to be seconded to the Hungarian government, where he impressed with his excellent Hungarian. In the four months he was with us at the embassy, he made a hugely positive impression, reaching out to everyone. He was a consummate professional. For me, one of the highlights was hearing Stephen speak in Hungarian live on national radio on the morning after Brexit. Now, winter being the Scottish season, he enjoyed the St Andrew's Ball and the various Burns nights here, including reciting some of Robert Burns' work in Hungarian. No mean feat. And I guess that's why my own personal connection with Stephen was so strong. We were both Scots. He was from Glasgow. I'm from near Glasgow. We both went to Glasgow University and we both loved Glasgow. It became a standing joke that in order to get a job at the embassy, you only had to be Scottish, love Glasgow and speak Hungarian. We received hundreds and hundreds of messages from Hungarians and others, most of whom never met Stephen, but were touched by his tragedy. Let me again thank all of those who paid their condolences and also thank the medical staff at St. Janos Hospital who tried to save his life. If you would care to contribute to a worthy cause in Stephen's memory, his parents have suggested that people may wish to contribute to the Samaritans, for whom Stephen volunteered for a number of years. Here in Hungary, we have suggested people might like to contribute to Os Ökumenikú Segei Szervezet or Nopkur Mental Higiénis Olopidvány. The work of all of these organisations is of particular importance at this difficult time. Details of how to do so are in this post. Stephen and I recited some Robert Burns poetry together in January. So let me finish with a few words from Burns' epitaph on my own friend. The friend of man, the friend of truth, the friend of age and guide of youth. Few hearts like his with virtue warmed, few heads with knowledge so informed. Rest in peace, Stephen. <laughs>